Good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Sharon. I'm going to be your lecturer for Mac 3602 today. Um, just a quick thing. Have all of you guys seen the online Google Classroom? All of you guys are aware? Okay, no. Okay, so there is a link, and you would have been invited if you're a full FU a student. Um, basically, any announcements, everything will go on here. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to post them on here. I encourage you to use the classroom rather than emailing me directly. You're going to get a quicker response if you use this platform. So if you can just, um, you'll use your Edge email address that's given to you once you've registered, and everything will be on here, including all the quizzes, all the paces, and everything. So I would advise that you do look at this. Yeah. Okay, so for the rest of you, everyone can hear me, right? It echoes quite a bit. Okay. So my email address, Sharon E at EBS, um, quite simple, same as everyone else's. Okay, um, Manac 2602, who of you guys don't like Manac? Who of you guys have done Manac? Okay, cool. So I'm just going to give you a basic understanding of what's going to be in the syllabus today. Um, the first lecture this morning is going to be really boring. It's a lot of theory, I'm sure. I don't know if you guys have looked at your study guides yet but it is purely theory for topic one and topic two. Topic two. So I'm just going to go over it, make sure you understand it, make sure you know what's important, um, but only from next week will we actually get into all the fun stuff, which I call fun, you guys probably hate. Okay, so as a company, you have shareholders and stakeholders and everything. Um, I like to be a little bit interactive, so who can tell me what the purpose of, or what those shareholders are looking for? Profits. And I mean, no one's going to open up a company unless it's a non-profit company for nothing. No one wants to invest and spend their time and their money unless there's profits. So at the end of the day, the basics is if, you don't, if you're not making money, people aren't going to invest in the company. So who of you guys are aspiring to be financial managers? You're already there. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So you'll, you'll have your financial manager. And the roles of the financial manager basically is what we're going to cover in this top in the entire syllabus for this year. So just an understanding of how everything fits in, because otherwise you go from one topic and the next topic, and then in a year's time you're like, it makes no sense anyway. Why do we even use this stuff? So this is just to give you an understanding of everything. Yeah. So we have the financial manager. Basically, they are involved in investment decisions. Sorry, my writing's not the greatest. Um, okay, so what type of investment decisions? It's whether we're going to rent or buy a factory, uh, whether we're going to, sorry, um, whether we're going to sell a product or discontinue a product and start up new operations and expand. Or we, we need to look at all those investment decisions. But in order to do that, we need to know where we are. So if you're sitting and you're like, okay, I want to, I don't know if Edge rents or buys, but Let's say I'm Edge and I want to start up a new school. So the options are we can buy a place or we can rent a place. And we need to look at which one's beneficial. Firstly, we also need to look at if there's going to be a market share for us and all that kind of stuff. So we'll say we'll do our budget and we'll say, okay, this is how many people we expect to come and this is what we can charge them and this is what it's going to cost to finance this operation. So now if we're buying, we need to go and take out a loan because no one has few millions, a couple of million in the bank. Well, hopefully I don't. Um, but so we're going to need to go and buy, uh, borrow money. So there's now different options of where we're going to borrow. Do you want to sell shares? Do you want to have um, preference shares? Do you want to have non-redeemable shares? And there's all the different things that we are going to touch on. Or do you want to go to the bank and finance through the bank? Or do you want to go to your existing shareholders and borrow more from them? So there's all the different decisions that we can make. And because of that, you're going to get your internal rate of return. So this is what we're hoping to get. And I just want to show you how it links. Oh, I can't write these things. Okay, does that all make sense? Okay, so your internal rate of return is what you guys, what your shareholders or what you need to pay back. So if you're borrowing money from a bank and you're borrowing at 9%, that's your rate of return that you need to get. So your cost of capital is going to be the 9%. So anything over and above, and above that you need to, is going to be profits. 
But if you do your budgeting and you do all of your calculations and you can only get 7%, it's going to be pointless to go and get that because you're going to be paying 9% as your cost of financing that operation and you're only getting 7% back. So that's one portion of the MEN Act, the financing option that we're going to look at um, later in the syllabus, but just so that you're aware of that. Okay. The next responsibility of the financial manager is financing decisions. So this is exactly what I've been saying now. Um, and this over here gives you your capital structure. Who of you guys have seen the WAP calculation yet? None of you? Okay, so everyone hates it. It's lots of fun. It's actually very simple. But your WAP calculation is your weighted average cost of capital, and this gives you your capital structure. So your financing decisions have to tie up with your capital structure. Because if your shareholders say, I only want 50% of borrowings from the bank and 50% through shareholding, you need to stick to the capital structure that they've set. So sometimes it might be better to borrow from a bank, but they might not want that. They want, might, might want it to be internal funding. So you need to always keep that in mind. Okay. So your next leg, you've got two. Um, you've got to manage your working capital, and I'll go through that now. And you've got your dividend policy. One star. Okay. So your dividend policy, like we said earlier, your shareholders, they're going to want money. No one puts in money for nothing, so they're going to want dividends. But part of that, you need to manage it. If you don't have money, you can't pay out dividends. You can't go and borrow money from a bank to pay a shareholder dividend because you're borrowing, paying interest on there, and then you're paying them dividends. And if you don't have money, it's because you haven't spent your money properly or you haven't done your financing properly. So we can't go and pay dividends just because a shareholder wants dividends. It doesn't work like that. You need to make sure that there's a dividend policy. And also, just because you have excessive money doesn't mean you can go and pay them excessive money because you need to obviously keep funding the business. Okay. So part of this is you're managing your working capital. So your working capital is all your funding, all your money in your bank, and how you're going to arrange funding. Um, so like I said, you're not going to go and buy a property if your rate of return is 7% and you have to pay 9% of it. But you're also not going to go and say, well, we can get thousands of people, thousands of students in, all paying us, and they're going to pay us monthly, or I'm not too sure, I think it's over a few months, and then no one pays us. So then we've made all the sales, but we have no cash flow. So you need to manage your working capital, because most of you will know, in a business, you're going to have your bad debts. I think you touched on that in like FAC 1501 even. So you have your bad debts. So if your bad debts are going to be excessive, it doesn't matter how well your business is doing if the cash flow isn't there, if no one's collecting money. So this is just a basic understanding of basically what's going to be in the syllabus um, and everything we're going to go through, obviously, at a slow pace as we go through all the, the course. And, yeah, any questions so far? Everyone happy? Okay. Guys, if I'm doing something wrong, you're allowed to tell me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with all the boring stuff now. Extremely boring stuff. I apologize for that. Um, so topic one, development of the organization strategy. So for a company, you, you don't just create a company. You don't wake up today, well, some people do, but they probably fail. Um, you don't wake up today and be like, oh, today I'm going to start, I'm just going to start selling products so I can make money. You, you have a goal, you have an idea in your head of what you want to do and where, where your business wants to be, no matter how small it is. So you're going to get your big companies, um, if you look at probably Woolworths, they have their mission statements and their vision statements, their, their, what their goal is and everything. And it's actually a very good example to look at that kind of stuff because this is what this topic covers. So you, it's split into your mission, which is basically your short term. Who can tell me what their short term goals are? Anything. It can be to running a marathon, to passing your degree. Okay. So we all here, hopefully, to pass our degrees. Um, your your short-term goal is to pass your degree. And why do you want to pass your degree? Okay, because you guys want to be the financial manager of Woolworths one day. I'm just using for an example, you guys want to be in that position where where you have a, a goal to, that you want to set, and that's basically your long-term goal. So your mission statement is your short term. It's where, what you want to do now. You want to be selling goods. You want to become. The, uh, um, you want to be doing, getting the customers in. 
and your long-term vision is to keep the customers there and how you're going to keep them happy. So your shirt, um, I like to personalize things because it makes more sense than when you're writing an exam. So for me, my short-term goal was to pass my degree, pass my CA. And my long-term goal is to be an audit partner and a lecturer. So I need to, there's steps that you need to take. But in order for me to do that, I need to have core values. Guys, you can't pass your degree if you don't study. So these are the kind of core values. When you're looking at personal core values, you're going to be looking at how many hours are you studying? Are you going to classes? Are you reading for your material? Or are you just pitching up on the day of the exam and writing the exam and hoping for the best? Okay, I know people that did that. I was one of them for a few times, but I had to rewrite, obviously. So don't do that, guys. Thank you.